cracking the mold and breaking barriers. My next guest is a trailblazer destined to break them. Decades after decades, singer, songwriter, actress Melba Moore has been doing it her way. Who can forget number one hit a little bit more and her classic Read My Lips, which earned her a Grammy nomination for Best Female Rock Vocal Performance. Melba was working as a music teacher when she got her start on Broadway 55 years ago in the revolutionary musical Hair. And then Melba went on to become the first African-American to win a Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in the musical Pearly. Now the superstar is taking on a new challenge in the stage adaptation of Imitation of Life based on the best-selling novel that led to two beloved and controversial films, one of them Oscar-nominated. Melba plays Annie Johnson, a black mom whose daughter passes as white, and that's not all. This summer, Melba will receive the ultimate entertainment honor, her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Sam Bam, welcome Tony-winning, three-time Grammy-nominated singer, performing the marvelous Melba Short hair, don't care. Rocking it. <laughs> this Walk of Fame honor that's coming up. Your star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> I mean, how does it feel? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah? It's amazing. I wish I had words for it. I'm gonna find words. <laughs> Yeah, because you got to give a long speech. You have to give a speech. Yeah. And other people want to give speeches too. Yeah. And I want to honor the people that really made this happen. So many people come together. It costs a lot of money. People pay money. You have to go through all of these board of directors. And uh, you, may, you have to meet a, a lot of requirements. Well, you've met plenty. Tony Award winning <laughs> history making <laughs> career. And, and what I love about your career at this high honor that you're about to receive, you keep reinventing Imitation of Life, one of my mother's favorite movies. I remember watching the Mahalia Jackson performance. Um, you'll be performing at the Cicely Tyson Theater in Philadelphia. I mean, just legacy after legacy. This is a monumental uh, performance here as Annie Johnson. Do you remember, my, my friend Don Lemon, and we talk a lot about remembering seeing the Imitation of Life for the first time. Do you remember seeing it on TV? I'm not sure the first time I saw it, but I've seen it many times. And uh, I haven't seen it for a very, very, very long time. But when I saw it again, I, I just cried. Yeah. It is so sad. Yeah. And that maybe the saddest part about it is we're still fighting these problems. Yeah. But the good thing about it is I play Annie Johnson, a maid. I got a Tony Award for that. <laughs> you got a Tony Award. <laughs> <laughs> It did not surprise me. You did not have to audition for this role, as I understand. I was trying to learn how to audition. You were trying to learn how to audition. That's the story of my life. How do you learn, when you're Melba Moore, I mean, how do you but, learn but to- I wasn't then. Uh, well. Well, first of all, I was a music teacher in the public schools of North Which North I North always North. loved about your story. <laughs> you know, we like to say around here, everyone has a story, let's talk about it. Oh, the fact yeah. that you started there, I mean, in, in, a, in a job, honestly, that's underappreciated. Very much Always so. been underappreciated. Very much so. But <clears throat> I, I told my stepfather, who actually raised me, who made me learn how to play, play piano, yeah. at 10 years old, I, before then, I didn't know I had a voice. But my mother married my stepfather, so family is very, very important. Yeah. 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 Now there's, there's a man at the head of my life sits me down, he talks to me. Now I have a brother, yeah. I have a sister. He had, he had a son and a daughter. I was an only child. Yeah. This is your first community. Uh, he uh, made us take piano lessons and I got involved with music. And after a point, he said, well, I don't want you to be a performer like your mother and me. I want you to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> 
So everybody in my family are school teachers. But after, at the point, I said, well, Daddy, you know, this is what you want me to do. Could you help me to get into the, to the industry? And if it doesn't work, I'll come back and teach. But the thing that I really took from my heart is that standing in front of the kids, they look through you. Mm. You see that. And I guess as a performer, I didn't know I was going to be a performer, you could see yourself in the audience. So you said, oh, they want to see this. You start to communicate some kind of way that way. So I thought, if I go out to be an entertainer and it works, I'll kind of be a teacher and a student forever. Ah. So I feel like I had that, um, that bar. Yeah. You can be an example. Well, you are, and, and here you are. <laughs> Just last year, you worked on, you released your 33rd album entitled Imagine. Thank you. I mean, first of all, can you imagine? <laughs> 33rd album? Well, the important thing about this album is now I get to pass the baton on to my daughter. Daughter, yes, your daughter brought this. She brought the project to me, um, well, I guess to all of us. During your daughter, Charlie. Charlie, C-H-A-R-L-I, Charlie. Uh, I know, ain't that cute? <laughs> uh, song by song over a period of two years or so. And she said, Ma, I think you could sing these songs. I said, well, they sound really, really nice. I don't know if they're for me. Mm -hmm. And I guess I can say it's, it's time to reinvent. Um, I don't think you can really do that from your own view of yourself. So she helped you reinvent yourself? Yeah. Oh. She says, I... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's us. <laughs> you obviously are famous for five octave range. Does Charlie inherit these things from mom? She could sing, but she doesn't want to. She doesn't. Uh, maybe she doesn't want to be in my shadow. Yeah. I could understand that. I understand that. I was really kind of in my mother's shadow, so she was a singer. Yeah. But she was beautiful, and I wanted to be just like her still. <laughs> but, but, but for and, you, when you see this bond, I mean, because here you are. Oh touring and working all of those years so hard and then motherhood and people ask all the time, how do we balance the dream <laughs> and then the other dream of motherhood? How was it for you, you know, really making history as we keep saying, but also balancing it with being Charlie's mom? Well, but I had a team. Yeah. And really kind of try to build that back again. Yeah. I had a husband who was my manager, who was her father. And a genius. He's uh, managing and agenting. That's talent. Yeah. It's a real gift. And if you have the, the artistry and that combination and a family, yeah. that's what I had. Oh. Actually, in this project, it's a family project because uh, my ex-husband is involved with it. Um, his uh, brother, who actually picked all of my hits, he and um, a team of people picked all of my hits over the years. They're the ones that put this project together. Oh, so. so it is a family affair. It really is a family Aww. affair. More with Melba Moore. We'll be right back. <laughs> we are with the iconic Melba Moore who breaks the ball every time in her career. So you are working, I'm told, on an autobiography. I read a quote that said, once you've been through something, you generally keep fighting and stay strong in life. I said that. That's what they... <laughs> You said, just put it in the book and own it. It sounds okay. good. <laughs> it sounds great. But you credit discipline, uh, honestly, oh, with a great portion of your success. Absolutely. I, I think discipline, um, I think it's a, it's a gift from heaven yeah. that says, well, keep trying. I don't mean that you're so disciplined and you've got it all down. But you say, oh, I, you're aware that something's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Well, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Don't sit down. Don't lay down. Just keep trying. I think that's what that is. With the, the, you know, from going for, as music teacher to where you are now, does it surprise you that this is how it all turned out? Yes, Especially, it does. <laughs> it's just one surprise after the other, because nothing has really been... I've been prepared for life, I think, yeah. but not for the things that life would do. I um, thought I would retire as a school teacher. Yeah. 
I didn't know my dad would help me get into the industry. One of the first people I met was Valerie Simpson, and she... A friend we share, the great Valerie okay. Simpson. Great, great, yeah. great, great, great Valerie Simpson. We were in somebody's publishing office, and we exchanged numbers, but she got me involved with backup studio singing. But from one of the recording sessions, it was for the musical Hair. Yes. So, which so I can't I, believe. Um, last year was the was it the, this year the 55th anniversary yes. of Hair, <laughs> and another milestone. Um, last year, the 50th anniversary of the CBS variety show series that you co-hosted with Clifton Davis. Here's Mom's Maybelline. Mom's Maybelline here. The range of this career, it, it always it seems, mesmerizes me. It seems me. like a series of accidents. I was just gonna say that from the recording session, it was, well, Galt, Dermot was doing his own version of the music of Hair, and they said they were still casting, and we sang in there for about two weeks doing all the music, but we were promised a role. I didn't audition for Hair, yeah. but I left the show with the lead role, replacing Diane Keaton. But that's how my life is. So one of the girls in the course of Hair said, Melba, <laughs> you don't even know how to audition. <laughs> and she gave me all the information to go up and audition for Pearly. So I was trying to learn how to audition, but I got the part. Oh my God. But I was raised by a nanny. You, you know what a nanny is? I, I, I certainly do. <laughs> I wouldn't be at this show if I didn't have one helping okay. me and helping to guide me and my family and my life. Of course I know. Well, mine never learned to read or write. Mm. Um, she was not even a maid. She was an orphan. She was shuffled around from place to place. Somehow she made it up north working for families. She raised me. That's why I got the Tony Award. I was imitating her. Oh. Oh. That's why, before the segment is over, I'm just here to say thank you. <laughs> oh. No, because thank these... you for this career representing women, <laughs> black women, and what it means to be resilient. I'm so happy you have music. Let me get my CD out here. Melba Moore, thank you. Soon to be in imitation of life at the Cicely Tyson Theater in Philadelphia. <laughs> And everyone in the audience, you can listen to Melba Moore anytime you want because you're all going home with a copy of her album, Imagine. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Melba. I'll give you a hug, my darling. Mm, thank you.